They can hear me. Yes. Welcome, everyone. If everyone can hear me, please wave your hand. All righty. Sounds good. All right. You know, I had some uh, starts with some questions ahead of time. And I've got a couple here that I wanted to do a little teaching and explain. So we'll start with that. Uh, these are questions uh, some people had, I believe, emailed me. And one of them would be the ethics and belief system of what you get in a reading. Uh, the example that was given to me was someone going for a reading. And they got a reading, and in the midst of the reading, the person volunteered to them when they were going to die. And I'm talking the person receiving the reading. And it's something there that I would question ethics on that because, you know, there's things we need to give to people and we're being guided to give to people. And there are times that they're, uh, let's say, focused on other things or other questions. And it's more important for spirit to have certain things come through. But when we have something there, you know, there's morals and ethics on the idea of what you would or what you wouldn't. And I've had it happen many times where I'd be picking up on things for people and they'd be asking me questions. And on an ethical level, really isn't a question for them to ask. I've had them ask questions about people that are strangers, that are uh, asking questions that are very personally related, uh, if they're ill and if they're going to pass. And I mean, just, just things that are just not what should be. And I felt an energy there with that as, as we had the question here. I look at the idea that ethically, if you look at just the ethic levels of what a counselor would, that fits most of what we do in mediumship. And I find with mediumship, working with our ability and skill, we're needing to be aware of the idea that even if we're picking up something for someone, and it could be tragic, there could be at times things come through that are not so good or not so nice, but to be able to express something in, in a way that's a positive level, of belief and understanding and not allow it to be a circumstance that you're placing fear within the individual. I've actually had people uh, say to me, they've gotten a reading and the person came right out and said to them, well, you're losing your mother. Your mother's going to die unexpectedly. She's just going to pass and scared the people half to death. And I find it's just to me an unethical thing to be giving areas like that messages I've had it happen where I'd feel someone was passing, and what spirit does with me, they give me the information, and it may be information that certainly would upset someone or be tragic to them to lose someone, and spirit doesn't give it to me in a way of saying, you know, they're going to die. It's brought to me in a way of, okay, be aware of the healing and the aspect of helping people and understanding. Are things really in order in their lives? And it's like you're not saying it in a direct form, but they, they're they going to catch on when things, let's say someone's ill and they get more ill, they're going to catch on that, wait a minute, we better get these things in order. That's what was mentioned from spirit. And I find there's a lot of people out there that really are not carrying the ethics in a way that should be at times. And it's a little scary. I've had a young lady tell me one time that she was 14 years old and she said that the mother had gotten a reading and then the daughter got a reading at 14, which I have no problem reading for someone at a younger age. That's no issue there. But it's the idea of let's be really thoughtful on the idea of what are we ethically doing. And here this little girl got a reading that her mother had cancer. And it was really scary for a little girl and it took me quite a while two, three times talking to her to calm her down and get her to a point of understanding and belief that was a more peaceful level. And her mother later had cancer years later. It wasn't a circumstance of coming right away. But I look at that as something that to me, you know, mentioning the idea that for your mother to be healthy and to give positive things in that direction is very meaningful but to allow it to be a circumstance where you're saying for certain, you know, she has cancer, she's going to die of cancer. You know, that's, that's really quite ridiculous. But I've seen some things. Uh, I live in Lloydale and I work in Lloydale every summer. I've been doing that for, well, this coming season will be 47 seasons as a registered medium. 
So I've been at it a little while. And I've seen some things at times that are said even in public services that I sometimes cringe. And that's where we need to be thinking about our own abilities. Excuse me. <coughs> that's where we need to be thinking about our own abilities and what we're sharing and giving because we all have gifts and we all have the ability to feel things. Now, getting back to something, I know spirit at times gives me things to show me what's coming up, but it wasn't given to me to give to the person. It was given to me to be able to then, let's say, soften what's there and be able to share with the person something they can be aware of and watchful for, or even the idea that, all right, you know, grandma's having problems with her legs, grandma's having trouble with her heart, you know, various things like that just to be aware of. So it's warnings in a sense of protecting and always do it in a way that it's a healing aspect and not the idea of people looking at it going, all right, that, that's it, this is so negative. You know, I've seen things turn around where they thought they were on the, in their deathbed and they've turned around and lived for years. And I think God can only only depict when someone's really going to be passing. <clears throat> and when we look at ethics of people, you know, everyone has a gift and ability. And we feel things. I've had people at times blurt things out that afterwards they thought about it and thought, well, you know, maybe I shouldn't have said it that way. You know, it isn't the idea of not giving a message. It's the idea of how we're giving the message and what context are we putting on that. Because it can be very dangerous to some individuals. I read for children that their parents are passing or one of the parents passed. I had uh, one young man that came to me. His uh, father and mother died in a car accident tragically and the babysitter was at home. And they got the phone call at home from the police and the babysitter turned around and blurted out, your parents are dead. And, you know, that certainly put, put a lot of stress on the child. So it's like, let's be aware of what we're picking up and sensing and look at it a little more as to what kind of impact are we going to have here. And I would say also, whether it is an adult or a child, be very sensitive. It doesn't matter what, what age, it's just let's be very sensitive. And the other question, what was that? Um, you covered the relay sensitive information, um, mm -hmm. boundaries, uh, boundaries from spirit. I had a couple people ask questions about boundaries with spirit and I'll put it in two forms. Boundaries meaning what are we allowing spirit to come in and give us and share with us? And in what way are we allowing them to work with us? If we allow them to work with what work with us with no guidelines and no, you know, things are acceptable, things are unacceptable, we're leaving things wide open for some game players from the spirit side of life. And if we take things a little more seriously and we set intent and we do it in a prayerful form, we're not only lining things up as ethics, but we're lining things up emotionally. And I find a lot of people will look at things and be very emotional over things, get very attached to what they're getting and what they're receiving, and they give it in an emotional manner. And we need to be aware of the idea that you have some people in life that like the drama, they like being in the drama and create the drama, and we have other people in life can give a very, very clear message and a very meaningful message without all the drama involved. And we need to be aware of the idea of how emotionally attached we are because to really share a message in a meaningful manner, we're needing to step back and not get our emotions involved in it so much, but be aware of what we're really receiving. And that will make a huge difference in our ability to not only share the message, but it be really in depth and meaningful. I've watched it at times where people get into dramas and they're giving the message, but they're getting into the emotional part. And as they get into that, it actually diverts away from the real message because the emotions take over. And we need to be aware of the idea that to feel the emotions is part of the gift, but to recognize too the ability to keep the clarity and keep that focus. You know, I see people at times that have different religious belief systems. And I many times have used the phrase, a Christian spiritualist, 
because people feel more comfortable in certain belief systems that if you're approaching it as being a Christian, they feel much calmer, they feel much more focused. And it's something that we need to be aware of, of their belief system as we share the message with them. Even if they've openly asked for the message, in what belief system are they coming from? And we need to have respect for their belief system and bring it to them in a way that is gently done and at a guiding level and it's really meaningful to them and they, they receive it so much better. You know, I've had some people that are foreign. I read for a lot of people in Japan and they have little different belief systems there. I've read for people from all over the world. So I try to be aware of where they're coming from in a conscious basis. You know, on a conscious level, yes, we're picking up the phone or we're sitting down to talk to, talk to someone. But on a spiritual level, we need to be aware of, are we bringing it to them that the essence of what we're giving them is the meaning they need to know and not just something that is misconstrued. I've seen it happen where people have things misconstrued and we need to be really clear about making sure we're giving it to them in a way that's not, you know, misconstrued. <clears throat> you know, as we take time learning our mediumship, and working with spirit. We need to have perimeters that we set up. I've had one lady say to me, well, they come to me in the middle of the night, wake me up, and sometimes they give me things, sometimes they just scare me. Well, number one, there's no reason to be frightened of spirit. Spirit's with us in a loving, healing, caring manner. And we need to be aware of the idea that if we set perimeters in our own prayer, we're setting a guideline for them to come in. You know, I've had people say to me, well, I don't want to see them. I'll feel them. That's fine, but I don't want to see them. And we need to be aware of the idea that we learn one way of experiencing spirit. And what happens is we become very good at that. Now, whether it's feeling, <coughs> excuse my throat tonight. <coughs> whether it's feeling, seeing, sensing in whatever form it comes in with your gift, to be aware of the idea that I always set up a perimeter and I'll just explain my perimeters, which I think will help you with yours. I don't allow it to be a circumstance where they just pop in any time at any moment and just start giving things. Uh, that would be easy to do, but it's also an energy that becomes disruptive. And I refer to it as having my own life too. And I need to have my space and time. And that's where it's not blocking them because if something was really important, they'll bring it through. But it's something to set a perimeter. You know, how many of us take time in meditation and we do the meditation and we can ask spirit to come to us then in a way that we may recognize and understand. And we can experience our presence as well as our message. But I've had where people are bothered by it and couldn't sleep, and they would have experiences of people showing up by their bed or coming in dreams real strongly and being very disruptive. You know, we do have the power and ability to set a perimeter. I know a lot of people that shut down and pull back because they don't feel they're in charge or in control of what's going on, and they feel absolutely wide open to whatever's there. And it's something that we don't really need to do that. We ask our guides and teachers and loved ones to come to us in a way that we may understand and do it in a prayerful manner. We always ask for the white light of protection. We always ask our guides to come to us in a manner that we really feel and recognize. So there's a clarity of knowing it's them. I recognize my guides through feeling. I know some people say, well, what's their names? And that's fine if you want to do it that way. But it's the idea of recognizing when you feel them and you recognize that this is my guide. They brought me information and guidance before. I've also had some people pose some questions and I'll go, well, how come I don't have their names? Or you don't give me the names of my guide. I have guides in my life that I've had since childhood and I've never had a name from some of them. Some of them I have names. I could recognize them. But the way mine come in, I will either see them or I'll feel their presence. 
and it's just like a photograph to me. I recognize the energy and I recognize the, the sincerity and purpose of why they're there. And I also have a couple guides that come in that when things are incredibly important, no matter how diverted I am, and I'm doing, so I could be fishing, I could be walking on the island on the beach or something, but spirit will bring it through in a way that it's like, this is really important. You know, I remember walking in a mall one time and it really came to me strong that I needed to call a friend of mine and tell him that his mother was gonna be all right. She had taken the car keys, she was very senile, and she took the car keys and wanted to go home from the nursing home. And here she was visiting with the family, the family brought her, brought her to their home, and she actually took the keys, went out, got in the car and left, and was trying to find her way home. And I called the one son up and I said to him, I said, the police are gonna pull her over, just report to the police, that you know she's really mentally unaware, and they found her. They pulled her over, and they talked her into coming into their cruiser, and that she would be able to go home. They drove her by her house, and said, "Dear, you no longer live there, but we'll take you back to where you're living." So it was a real experience. And my friend, he he said to me later, he goes, "I can't believe you knew." that everything was gonna work all right and that she was actually driving all right. This woman was completely senile, but driving just fine. Approaching the intersections, red lights, whatever, she drove just fine. But she was out of it, she had no idea where she was, she couldn't find home. So remember when we're picking up something, you may pick up things and feel things that are pertaining to your family or your loved ones or even friends, but when you pick it up, See what you really feel in it, and that way when you're sharing it with them, you're giving it to them in a way that is giving them evidence, giving them guidance, but not giving them fear. There's no need for the fear. You know, I've had it happen in my life where I've been at uh, hospitals and things like that where someone be on their deathbed, and actually I've been there many times when they've passed. And I know the family at times, like they wanna keep them here, they wanna hang on. And I always say a prayer of healing, that as I do the prayer and healing, I always ask for God to share with them the healing energy, here or hereafter. Meaning, if it's meant to be for them to go on, the healing energy is supporting them in that process. If it's meant for them to be here and hang on and live, it's meant to be, that's wonderful. But we're adding energy in a positive manner without placing a dictation of saying, what we think we want or the outcome we want. Many times I've seen people pray in what you could term a selfish manner, or you can even say a controlling manner. And we're needing to understand that if we put it in God's hands, we're bringing the highest and most positive energy possible to whatever circumstances occur. And it makes such a difference to have that instead of people being demanding, controlling. I've even had people say, oh, she's not leaving now. You know, she's going to hang on. And it was their ego, desire, or emotions that were driving it. And the person passed over. So it's something that we're human. I don't believe we're always right. I believe spirit's right, but I don't believe we're always right. And remember, we're transferring a lot of information into a conscious level and explanation, you know, verbally. So we need to realize we're the weak, we're the weak link here and to be alert to that. Okay, another question? Okay. Um, didn't know if you wanted to cover what to do with capabilities, how to help people, besides. In what form? Besides reading. Only Diane wanted to know what she could do with being able to do stuff. Oh. Uh, one of the questions posed was how to do things and what to do with things, and it'd be the abilities within you to share with others. And I find it's real important that as we become more aware of what we're feeling and we become in tune to the feeling of it, we really know it's there. You could refer to it as a gut feeling. I feel there's some of you right here with us tonight that really has very strong gut feelings, and you pick up on things at times stronger than others. 
And there's moments you may feel things where it comes in so clear that it's like there's absolutely no question in your mind. It's just there and it works. And then there's other times you feel like I'm not quite sure which way to take it. Does it mean this way or that way? And I feel a need to understand as we're doing it a little prayerful and calmness, if we let our consciousness get in the way, we divert things in a conscious manner. If we allow ourselves to work with it at an intuitive level and just trust what we're getting, we pretty soon recognize that it's spirit giving it to us and it's not something we're consciously thinking. I refer to it many times with students. Uh, people say to me, well, I thought that, and then after, after the event, I recognized it was from spirit. Well, that's a good practice to recognize it because then we build more trust of what we're feeling and when we feel it, and it'll come in more clear each time. And if we sit down and take at least 10 minutes a day to focus on that, asking for that guidance, they may bring us very trivial things. I've had it happen where they'd bring me as a, as a child, they'd bring me little trivial things that happened in my life and they'd tell me ahead of time. Well, there wasn't a message in a sense of dire straits or anything really wrong. It was the idea of proving to me I was picking it up and the clarity was there and the accuracy was there. And this is where we needed to relax and follow through. <coughs> So let's try to take 10 minutes a day there and focus on that. And even if you did it more than once a day, that's fine to follow through in that feeling. You know, I have always felt spirit from when I was born. I remember being born. I remember being in the oxygen tent. I remember these experiences that I find with most people, they'll say to me, they don't remember. And I remember spirit being with us and my father holding me in his hand and he had his hand under my chest and he was getting the phlegm out of me. I was in the oxy oxygen tent and he reached in and flipped me over and was getting the phlegm out of me. And I remember very vividly that I could step out of the body. Now, I don't know how many of you experienced this, but I could step out of the body then and I step out of the body now. And I feel there's a few of you here that have been having some experiences of being out of the body, coming back with a bit of a jolt or a sudden awakening that you're back in the conscious body again. And I feel this is something very important to recognize that spirit can work with us better and easier on the dream state than at times consciously. So if we're having trouble understanding what we're getting in a conscious basis and a meditation while we're awake and conscious, send out the thought to spirit Please bring it to me in a way in my dreams that I may recognize and understand. Please allow me to remember in the conscious mind in the morning. And that way, they'll bring in information to you that's important, and it'll be very positive for you. And then it's not a confusing thing while you're conscious. You know, while you're unconscious, we're really out of the way, and it can come through more clearly. Yes. Hmm. Well, what I'd like to do is open up to spiritual questions, not reading for you as a, as a reading for you personally, but what understanding would you like to understand more on a spiritual level, be it healing, be it mediumship, be it meditation, whatever form it may fit in. If you have a question, please raise your hand, and we'll move through the people we see the hands raised. Jessica. Let me unmute her. Jessica? Hi, Jessica. Yeah. And we'll get your, get your volume up here in a moment. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. <clears throat> so if we are me meditating, not um, doing readings, but I'm yeah. just, I don't want to say only meditating, but just meditating. Right. Um, do we bring our prayer in as well? How, how yeah. do we keep ourselves safe when we're that open? Well, let me say it this way. I, I really, I think it's a wonderful question because some people don't think about surrounding themselves with light. And I always have it in my mind so automatically that when I'm doing prayers, I sometimes don't verbalize it unless I'm teaching in front of a group or I have my Wednesday night circles. I don't verbalize it, it's just automatic. 
And I always look at the idea that if I'm going to meditate, that I take time to be calm and I have a moment or two that is asking for protection, asking a spirit loved ones to come to us in a way that we may understand, and then pose the prayer and thought of question or ask them for something. Now, I've had people say to me, well, I asked about this and I got no answer. Well, remember, if we're going to do a meditation, we're asking spirit to come to us in a way that we may understand. And to me, that's the meaning of that quiet time for us to listen. Mm -hmm. And if we do it in that form, we then have the prayer and the thought go out, and we're putting that out there and letting go of it. And we're there then being quiet and at peace and allow spirit to bring answers and guidance to us. And remember also in the midst of this, I always pose the question, do you have something to share with me that I'm not thinking about or focusing on or see the need for? Because that way you're asking God's presence and guidance, which are the angel loved ones, to come to us in a way of sharing something that we may be missing on a conscious level. We may not be thinking about because what we consider important at times spirit would not look at that as the most important. They would have something else more important. Now, whether it's something that we're aware of, but we were not considering important, or whether it's something that they need to give us a warning about something that we're not even aware of. So always leave that door open that we're asking them, is there something I need to know? Okay, so can, can I go over something that happened sure. today? Sure. Um, as I was doing my meditation, it was kind of like there was um, a force, an entity, a, a person, possibly someone I know, trying to get into my energetic field. Yes. And it, it felt like it was like a battle. So if I opened up my field anymore, they would have come in. Yes. And I had to kind of <laughs> close down while kind of pushing them off. Well, let's put it this way. If we surround ourselves in that light and we're asking for the protection. Now, this is where a good example would be setting perimeters. When we set perimeters, you're setting perimeters to say, all right, I, I usually have spirit come in on my left. Okay. If they're coming in to share something or give a message. In other words, they're welcome. But, well, for lack of better terminology, I keep my arms reach in the sense of they're there. I'm aware of their presence. But they do not have the ability to overwhelm me. If I choose to allow them in communicatively, that's fine. But I also have the ability to say, no, you know, I don't feel you're here for the right reasons. And that's where your guides and teachers come in as protection. And that's where they filter it. So when it comes to you, there's a part of you then can trust and know they're okay. They've already been through your filters, okay. your teachers, your guides. Okay. And you set, up, you set a hierarchy up of that energy that they're testing and they're taking care of whatever they're going to want to, you know, give to you or share with you. I've had it happen where people said to me they felt very drained after experiencing someone in their aura or in, like you were saying, a work field, and they feel very drained. Well, we shouldn't feel drained. Okay. They should not be taking from us. Okay. So if you set that up, that's a filtering system that then eliminates you have to worry about it. Okay. And if okay. they want to share a message, I always put out the thought, do you have something to share with me in a way that I may understand? Please allow me to recognize it in my conscious mind. That way it'll come through in a way that is really understandable and, and well explained. Okay. Yes, anything else? I'll digest that first. I'm sorry? I just said that she's I'll okay. digest it first. All righty. Thank you. Anyone else? Patty. Go ahead. Hi, Patty. Hi, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Good. I wondered if you would talk about uh, hierarchies of spirit. 
Um, you've communicated with spirit for so many years. I'm wondering if you can share with us um, whether or not you've experienced different hierarchies of spirit, in other words, um, different levels of being. Um, so I'm talking about entities other than what we would recognize as just, you know, grandparents or children or someone from the earth plane who's passed on. Do you communicate with higher entities? Yes, I've had it happen many times. Now, let me just do uh, a short explanation of what I have experientially looked at as a hierarchy. I've okay. had people say to me, well, you know, do you pray to spirit? I said, no, I pray to God. And I always refer to that in that form because, you know, I, I had a class one time where I had a, a lot of little kids, four-year-olds, five-year-olds, up to maybe 10, 11 years old. And I said to them, if you're going to go to the Empire State Building, don't you want to go to the top floor? You don't want to be, you know, at a lower level. And I use that as a metaphor for them. And one little boy said to me, he said, well, he said, when I go to bed, I see faces and the faces are distorted and the faces are stretched and there's different, different ways he's seeing these things and a little frightening for him. And I said to him, I said, well, I use the metaphor of the Empire State Building. You know, as we go further up, we're reaching a higher level of spirit in heaven. All right. Now, to me, God's first. And then as you come down, the spirit world, and I want to say there's many dimensions of the spirit world, like they talk about many mansions, you know, in the spirit world and in heaven. Mm -hmm. I believe there's many dimensions that are available to come through and communicate. I'll, I'll put it in this form for, for easier way of explaining it. To me, the spirit world are the guardian angels that watch over us, that come to us and help us at various levels. And I find there's some levels there that are limited where they're not allowed to come help us because they're still learning and growing and progressing. And the hierarchy to me would be the higher levels of spirit and, you know, starting with God, then coming down line to the idea of the spirit realm and then a higher level of the spirit realm. And I believe there's, there's entities in some areas that are playful and manipulative and still like to play games. They didn't learn what they needed to on the earth plane, and they're still learning. And I believe that we're protected from them if we choose to be. And I find if people want to do negative things, manipulative things, play games, uh, they can draw upon energies that are not so nice. And I've seen it happen. Uh, one example would be, I remember as a teenager, I would go out and I lived in Ohio, born and raised in Ohio, and I'd go out to Mosquito Lake and go fishing. And I would stop at this one bar restaurant, and it was more a bar than a restaurant, but they had wonderful sandwiches. And I would go in and get a couple sandwiches for a friend and I, and we'd go out and fish off the causeway. Well, I'd walk in there and I would see different entities clinging to people that are there drinking. And I watched the energies there. Now, just because someone passed over, it doesn't mean they all of a sudden are spiritual or understanding of spiritual things. They have to grow and progress. And I find that if we allow ourselves to be in a lower realm of belief and thought, and we're taking actions that are more negative, we can draw upon some of those entities. And they at times do hang out. I've seen it happen. I've watched it happen. I also worked with some police psychologists that the psychologist even admitted to me, he said, I really believe there are times they're affected by other people. And the gentleman looked at me and he said, other people, and he pointed up. And he referred to spirit affecting people in a negative manner. So if you look at the hierarchy, why Jesus spoke of the positivity and the idea that we learn to surround ourselves in light. That's very important because there are some negative energies that we can be in touch with and it's all around us in the physical world, but it's like, in what way are we approaching it? So that to me, there's many dimensions on the spirit level. And if we look at it as the highest and best and we surround ourselves in that light, we're going to have the harmony. You know, I see people all the time 
that when you would term it mental conditions, emotional conditions, you know, sometimes they like the drama and they like the, the play games at times to maneuver people, manipulate people. I've seen it all my life. I'm sure you have too. So if you look at all those conditions and realize if we cut through that with our thought and prayer and asking to be protected and we're doing it on a regular level, we're going to be fine. We'll be guided. And our guardian angels that are around us, you know, I, I would place guardian angels you know, like some Catholic belief systems would say the guardian angels are with us. Well, I find that when I'm reading for someone, I've had someone of the old beliefs in, in uh, you know, the Catholic faith. I've had the entities come through as guardian angels. And that was more acceptable to that individual than it would to me to say spirit. Because they might be frightened by spirit, but guardian angels, okay. So when we're looking at that energy and thought, we need to be aware of where's that person's belief system and the hierarchy of spirit. Because I feel that we have so many dimensions on the spirit side of life. To me, I have at times listened to people say, well, there's this dimension, that dimension, another dimension. And I, I look at it as on a human level, I find it a little strange to believe that they know all these dimensions and that they're so secure in knowing all these dimensions. I go to the source, I ask the guidance, and I know the angel loved ones that come to me have been tried and tested many times in my own life. And I recognize them as the guardian angels and the angel loved ones, which I do include as family. And they come through to me also. I feel my mother's presence quite often. I have many times felt my father's. And grandmother was very strong. She was a huge influence on me. And I, I they reached a higher level. I, I, when I was meditating today, I thought I saw your grandmother. Mm -hmm. um, I, just, I just wondered if um, I saw she had, whoever I saw had some kind of a growth around her heart. And um, it seemed as though uh, not being able to express her emotions, there was something inside that was um, growing around her heart and that on her death, she kind of like, was like jumping into water. It was just such a release. And I felt like it was an emotional release, like a, an expression that she was allowed to have at that point. My, my grandmother was a spiritualist, a medium, a healer, herbalist, and was very good at all of them. And when she passed away, she passed when I was nine. And she did have a problem around with the heart and fluid and problems with fluid and lungs even. And that would have been a situation with her that at that time, I was not allowed to be in the hospital as a child. At that time, I didn't let kids in the hospital. My mm -hmm. mother snuck me in and I got to see my grandmother before she passed. And I freaked the doctor out completely because they had all the curtains and I come out of the room because my grandmother gave me her glasses and put them in the glasses case and said, take them home, put them on the dresser. I'll be home in a little while. And she was, she passed away. And the doctor looked at me and he was just all upset because you're not supposed to have any children in the hospital. And I said, well, grandma told me to go home and we need to go home. She said, she'll be home in a little bit. Well, can you imagine a doctor that didn't have any belief in this and understanding it? And he's like, here's this kid talking crazy that the grandmother's coming home and she's dying. Yeah. And she passed. She came home and sat on the side of my bed. And she explained to me that she'd be back in a little while. And for me to understand, she had to go with the angels, which I could see them with her. And she went with the angels. And I wrote her a letter and as a child, I wrote her a letter, and my grandmother's uh, had an open, open casket. And my mother took it and stuck it down underneath the blanket, put it all the way down on the blanket so no one would see it or remove it. And years later, there was a gentleman from Canada, and he was giving me a reading, an inspiration stump, and he said to me and explained to me about the letter. And he said, your grandmother comes to you and she's with you and around you a lot. But many people have given you that message. And he came through and gave me the message about the letter. Oh. 
So I find it fascinating. And this was years later, I was an adult. So it's like, it's pretty fascinating what can come through and how, how accurate they can be at times. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know what it was about the, the water. I just felt the congestion around the heart and kind of a like holding in of emotion mm -hmm. for some reason. And, mm -hmm. and then there was water. So I don't know if the water had something to do with the congestive heart failure or if the water was the release at her passing. You know, I'm not sure about that. It just, just a sensation that I had. That's very possible. That's very possible. She came through in less than an hour after passing. She was sitting on the side of my bed. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Anyone else have a question? Richard. Hi, Richard. Hi, could you, could you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so I've had instances where I've had psychic attacks. Yes. At, uh, in the middle of the night sleeping, that some entities have come into my, and just, well, and just attacked me in my sleep. Yeah. Uh, is there a way to stop that from happening? When you're going to sleep at night, send out the thought and prayer, certainly asking for the light to be around you and protect you ask you that you're protected, not only on the earth plane, but in your astral traveling, and that you in a dream state would be also protected. Please come to me in a way that I may understand and accept. Please share with me the lessons and clarity that I remember them when I wake up in the conscious mind in the morning. And I feel by setting that up, you'll solve the problem there with that. Okay. And you have to remember also, if you're around people on the earth plane, consciously, on the earth plane while you're awake and, and getting around the world. If you have people that are very negative, and I've seen people that would pull very hard on, on say for example, pull on you, but I've had it happen where they want to pull on me very hard. And I remembered when I went to sleep that I would picture them in a capsule and I would see them in this clear capsule and they may be blessed and in God's hands and nothing but good can come to me. And Put that thought and energy out there, and that will help you also. Okay. Thank you. Any other question? No, that, that's it. All righty. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else like to raise their hand? Yes. Me, I'm Peter. Hi. Me? Oh, hi. <laughs> hi, Reverend. How are you? You're on. Um, it's that I, I don't know. They have me as flower. But anyway, um, I wanted to ask you, um, is, is, is the way that spirit communicates with me mainly through dreams? Because in way in the past, I've often, like after people passed away, I've seen them in my dream and it was like a visit. Now, my ex-husband who died, you know, as you know, a few weeks ago, hasn't really, well, he did. I did see him in a dream drumming, but he wasn't drumming actually. But anyway, I kind of saw him from a distance. I'm assuming that was a visit, but <coughs> is that my main way or am I also consciously able to well, sense them? I mean, sometimes I say things without knowing and it seems like, like I have premonitions. Like when he was going to die, I had a premonition. I said to him, if you go to the other side, make sure you let me know. And then he died five days later. So yeah. I don't know why I said that, but. Well, think of it this way. When, when you're talking the idea of, of um, your ex-husband, you know, and he's, he's passed now. When, when he passed away, it was something that he may or may not consciously be aware of passing. But when he reached his spirit side, when you had the dream and he was a little bit at a distance, usually the symbol of them coming through after they've passed and you see them at a distance, they're learning, they're growing, they're progressing. And the reason it's a distance is because they're showing that you've, you've not had, they have not reached the point of being able to share with you in a really complete manner. If they're at a distance, they're still learning. In another dream you may have, they may be closer. In another dream, they may be closer yet. And if that shows the progression they're making and the changes they're making in their own spirituality and understanding. And then when you see them in dream where they're really there with you and conversing with you, they've progressed to a point of understanding enough to be able to reach through. 
I see. Okay. That's why you see them at a distance at times. I many times have had people say to me, well, you know, my husband came to me or my grandmother came to me, but, you know, they were so far away. I knew it was them, but they were so far away. They hadn't understood and progressed yet and their own knowledge to be able to reach through. And as they progressively reach through more, they'll get closer and closer and closer. When my mother passed away, uh, she died. <clears throat> she died at 410. At 512, she was standing at the end of my bed. And she conversed with me just like you and I are talking now. But mm. understanding that she was a spiritualist and a medium, and, and we had talked a year earlier, we were sitting at the dinner table at my parents' home, and she said to me, this is the month I'm going to pass in. And that's the month she passed in the next year. Wow. And we knew and understood it. And there were people in my family that I could share with. And like my grandmother, when I was just a small child, she'd take me to visit the relatives. And after we visited, a little while they'd pass over. And she said to me, I wanted you to know them on the earth plane. So when they come to you on the spirit side, there's a recognition, understanding that you know who they are. Okay. And I have some mementos from the people that passed away. I have a lady that passed away and she gave me a brass rabbit that was a paperweight on her desk. And she gave that to me as I was leaving. I still have it. And that was an aunt. And that lady was a lovely person. I got to see her three days before she passed. They found her that she slept away in her own bed. And when I had talked to her and got to know her and we sat and had tea, it was really interesting to understand the knowledge she imparted to me and shared with me. And when she passed away, she came back to me in a dream state and showed me how happy she was, that her family did not have to take care of her and she was not in major illness. So when you see them at a distance, and then they start coming in closer in a dream. Know they're learning, growing, progressing on the spirit side. Okay, thank you. All right. So I'm I'm am I consciously able to sense them? I don't know. I guess well, I guess I probably do, but don't realize it. <laughs> well, you're sensing things, but I feel your mind is so quick that you sometimes will go through thoughts and it's like, all right, am I thinking it? Am I feeling it? Feeling it meaning it's spirit. Or am I thinking it? Because you go so quickly in your thought from one thing to another that at times, at times becomes a little confusing as to did I feel this, literally feeling it, meaning coming in from spirit, or am I really thinking it? And that comes, it comes a little confusing at times. But as you're meditating more and slowing down a bit and in a little more of a calmness, you're going to notice a difference and you'll feel much better with it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. God bless you. God bless you too. Do we have any other questions here? Please raise your hand. One of the one of the things I'm feeling that I want to share with the group, our world changes now of all the things that's occurring, and I want to put it on the side of nature, not all the political stuff happening, but I want to say nature. Uh, we're presently in Florida. Leslie and I are in Florida right now. We're in a condo here in Fort Myers. And I love being in Florida, but I have felt things in the world happening and some of the changes that are going to be occurring even more. Now, some of you may or may not believe in the earth change energy that's going on, but I find it's going to be very interesting how many storms and things we're going to have that I really feel futuristically people are going to look at it as quite unusual. And some of the changes in weather it would be hot as well as cold, and we're going to have quite a few of those things happening. And I want to say, let's be aware of where you've been living, because I'm sure some of you have lived in the same environment for quite a while. What changes have you noticed in the past few years, and what's going on with the weather change? You know, I read for people all over the world, and I've had some people in Japan that have commented to me that there's parts of the islands that they literally built and piled up the sand, dirt, whatever you want to call it, and it's settling and sinking, 
and they're at times wondering, is it settling and sinking or is the ocean level rising? I really believe the ocean level's rising. I know there's places in Florida that are really low to the water and they're having trouble with the, the uh, sewer systems because the salt water's backing up in the sewer systems and not allowing the, the sewage to go out in the systems as easily as they would have before. I've even had people say to me they flush toilets and that would not go down as easily. And I know areas that that's happening in. You know, I saw just a little tiny blip on the news the one time, whatever, documenting scientifically how much the ocean level's rising. Let's be aware of that and be aware of where we're at, where our friends are at, where our families are at, and what experiences are we having with the changes? Because I believe it's gonna step up in speed as to how quickly things are gonna be happening. And they're gonna happen a lot quicker than people would have predicted so far. I've been feeling it, so we'll see what else comes about. You know, uh, I live in Lowydale, New York, and I love being there, and it's wonderful. And I think it's 15, 1535, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's above sea level. Uh, Lake Erie is 500 feet above sea level. And I remember driving down the East Coast one time and thinking how low and how many miles inland through the Carolinas there was areas there so low, it was amazing. I didn't realize that, you know, that that whole area was so low. And just be aware of the idea that a lot of the governmental people know, now like down here going towards Miami, they have built roads up and the roads are 15 to 20 feet higher than the rest of the old roads. And there's gotta be a reason. And they're not wanting to say anything, but there's gotta be a reason. And I find it fascinating how many people worry about the commerce and the tourism. And no matter what's going on, it's like, shh, don't talk about that. You just keep it all quiet. So I think it's going to be interesting what's coming up in the next 10-year time span, let's say. Because I see more things happening more rapidly than people would ever want to believe. So it's going to be an interesting, interesting life and process. Also. All right, we've been close to an hour here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyone have any final questions? Raise your hand if you do. Yes. Let me unmute her. Hi, girl. Hi. Um, I was just wondering um, about. Um, I forget what it's called when you, oh, astral projection. I was thinking about that today in my meditation. I think I, I talked to you one time and told you that um, I, was, I was trying to get to Lilydale and I, I thought I got to your house and I, and I was looking at your socks as you were sitting in the recliner. <laughs> but I wanted to ask you, um, are there different ways to move from point to point by um, connecting with inanimate, what we consider inanimate parts of a place. Like today in my meditation, um, I felt like um, the wood, like the, the molecules in the wood could identify with similar molecules in another place. And I could kind of feel a connection uh, whether it was the same kind of wood or whether it was um, just the age of the wood or something. But I'm wondering if we can make a connection through those kinds of n not even necessarily some elemental things, because those would be living, but on a cellular level. And the reason I'm bringing this up is I've been reading a lot about, um, what's it called? Um, zero point where they reduce uh, the temperature of molecules and subatomic particles to zero point and they they all look exactly alike okay this is um the work of fritz albert pop and and so i'm wondering if we don't go all the way down to zero point if we just go to the point where we can connect like say <laughs> this sounds so crazy but um just just to connect like on a 
like today I was connecting through the wood, through the wood in my house, connecting that to a house in another place. Is that possible? Well, number one, you can be able to feel the vibrations at a, at a really, let's say a micro level. And I remember one time looking at things and uh, just for example, recently, I was standing on my back back porch at Lowydale looking out the windows while well, I'm in Florida. And I got up in the morning and I'm sitting on the side of the bed and I just had this real quick in and out that I was there as you in the lake and I could describe the lake and everything. And I knew it was at that moment. It wasn't the idea of memory. It was at that moment. So I believe very much if you have an object that you could tune to and focus on, it can draw you to the point where you can actually project somewhere. I have friends of mine that work with that and they worked in the service with that in the armed forces. And I know you can do that <clears throat> by being given an object and hold an object almost like psychometry and go to where that object was. And it's just an anchor point. So anything you're choosing to look at, it can be an anchor point for you to project to that place, home, business, lake, mountain, whatever it may be, you'd be able to do that. And that's you're saying, that that, you're saying that that object would have to come from that place, no. that object, no? no? I'm using that as an example. Oh, okay. That's how you can do that. But it's also an energy that all you have to do is be thinking about it and you go there. My grandmother always said to me as a child, she said, you think it, it is. Yeah. And to no longer limit yourself in your thought process of belief, you think it, you're there. And that's where I know a lot of people that do a lot of things uh, in remote viewing. I have some friends that have done a lot of remote viewing. And all you have to do is think about the place I used to work with a lady, she's passed away now, was a wonderful astrologer. And we would have a like little rap session and we'd get everybody around the table and we'd take the world map and some of them would use a pendulum, some of them would just see what they feel. And I would describe on the map where to go and we'd put markers on the map. And she had all the charts for all the countries in the world and a lot of the cities in those countries. And she was an excellent master astrologer. And I would say what country, we'd break it down to the areas or cities or mountains, whatever it may be. And I would say, well, this is what I feel is coming. And when that happened, she'd pull the chart out and then go through the chart. So it found amazing that earthquakes before they happened, we were picking out. And huge tsunamis, we were picking out. So it's like there were things there that were lining up. And I know that I was traveling there in my mind. I was traveling there and seeing and feeling the energy. And I could then go to where it was on the map. And that's something there that you can project outwardly in that form. And as far as seeing things in a sense of a microcosm, you can do that very easily. I've had that happen many times. And it's practicing to in a sense, project that practicing will work for you and work very well for you, but you need to relax and be in a calm state and not let your mind be scattered. You need to really focus on one thing. Right. Is there a way of doing this as a group, of setting an intention as a group and getting together just like you did with your group? Yeah, I, I've done that many times with different groups where we would take one particular place and I'd have photographs of it and I would have detailed photographs of it. And then I would have people and I would say, all right, here's the place. And what do you see there? What do you feel there? What do you sense there? And what's happening right now? And I've had it happen where they've picked up details of objects that I had left there and they would see objects and describe the objects. And I knew they weren't picking it up for me they were actually astrally going there and seeing it. They were viewing it. Oh. <laughs> so that can be done. And like there's many times also I've taken and, uh, you know, you'd have a stone 
well, I always have been interested in stones and where they're from and what vibration you feel from them. And I remember doing a circle one time and in the Yellowstone National Park, I had picked up a stone in the campgrounds area and it was sort of like a little crystally in some ways, but it was just random stones they had there. And I brought it home with me. And when we sat in a circle, I put it in the circle and I said, does anyone feel anything with that? Is there a message? Is there a guidance? Where did it come from? And the one lady said to me, it was in the campgrounds at Yellowstone National Park. She picked it right up and described it. So it's like pretty amazing what can happen. But we're so scattered at times in a conscious basis that it makes it difficult. Right. All righty. Thank you. Sure. All right. Well, we've been a little over an hour now, and I hope everyone enjoyed. And I wish there had been more questions, but next time we'll be back on, and that will be the 20th of March. And we'll be back on at 7 o'clock in the evening, and we'll still be here in, in Florida, and we'll do it from here. Well, thank you, everyone. Enjoyed seeing all your faces and hearing your questions. And those of you that haven't had questions, if you'd like to email questions, the next class, we'll go ahead and have some questions uh, ahead of time, and I can explain what you're asking. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Night. 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 Good night. Good night. Flower, you can just post it on uh, the Reverend uh, Gregory King Facebook page, or you can PM him on that page also, either way. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>